15 and 1 says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his own heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil unto his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt, and changeth not. Today we will begin to look at verse 5. It says, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Now, Proverbs 10 and 22 is another verse that's very similar to this in Proverbs as well. It says, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Finally, if everybody can go to 1 Timothy 6. We're going to read a few verses there. Uh, it starts out in verse 6 saying, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, the trap, the enemy, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveteth after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. As we come to this final verse in Psalms, we've looked at many characteristics um, on what it means to be committed. We talked about your righteousness, your behavior, your character, um, your goodness, talked about hating things that God hates, loving what God loves, talked about being committed even when it costs you and it begins to hurt and it's painful. Today, I want to talk about your money when it comes to being committed to God. Now, this first clause, he that put it not out his money to use, you know, take the reward against the innocent, it gives you some specific examples of how we can misuse money, using it to make money off of people, or using it in incorrect ways to gain money. A lot of times when money, money gets involved, folk get funny. Uh, we was good until Mama died and left us something. Now, who who, who going to get the couch? How much money was in the policy? And all of a sudden, we fighting. Who going to get the house? So fighting over this money. Mm, preach, Pastor Will. People change on you when it comes to money. People will hurt you. Money is interesting, though, because if you, the Bible says, if you want to laugh, have a good time, he said, a feast is made for laughter. Have a party. <laughs> uh, if you want to be merry, get drunk. Okay, stop, Pastor Will. <laughs> it 
did say wine. Okay, so y'all ain't working with me. Somebody might have got married last night. I don't know. He says, however, but money answereth all things. Somebody say money can't make you happy. Money can't buy you love. Look at your neighbor and say, it'll get you kind of close, though. telling you, you can be in love, but when you're broken in love, it's not a good feeling. Trying to be intimate when your stomach is growling. <laughs> and, and you don't know if you're going to have a place to sleep at the end of the month. Y'all ain't working with a brother today. So money ain't everything, but it's, it, it's something. Just feel better. Don't you feel better when your money right? Don't you feel better? You got a little extra step when you got a little piece of change left over. You got a little extra, you know, a little hop in your step. You feel a little bit better when your money is right. And yet, if you don't handle your money the correct way, the Bible says it can become a source of evil. The root of of all evil. Here's the interesting thing. God really wants us to prosper. Wants to bless us. Plenty of passages in scriptures deal with this. However, the challenge comes when you begin to count the blessings as if it's Godliness. Some of you are old enough to remember the prosperity movement and how people begin to say that you know God is moving based upon your money and how God is blessing you. And even leaders begin to do this. Some of you probably remember Jim and Tammy Baker and that whole time. And they just glowed and glittering and had air conditioners in the, in the puppy dog house. And y'all ain't working with me. Gold toilet seats and and all of this, and this is, look at God, look at God. And some of them begin to have their little jets, and they talk about God and bless me with a jet, and look at God. And, and, and everybody began to say, that must be God, because look at how blessed they are and how much money. And so people begin to pursue money. Go and preach right there. And if you go one verse earlier in 1 Timothy, that last clause says, supposing that gain is godliness. That's what they did. It was right in the Bible telling totally, you, no, that ain't it. And yet we started a whole movement of people chasing money. Money cometh. Money. I need my money. I need my money. God says, however, from such draw away. Withdraw thyself from that mentality. Verse 9 says, and they that will be rich fall into temptations and a snare. It's a trap. When we don't handle money properly, we become ensnared in the trap of the enemy to love money, which causes us to err from our faith and pursue things that can be against God's will for your life. I came out of college. I wanted to climb the corporate ladder. I did all right. About 10 years. Added $100,000 to my salary from 127 about 130000 And I'm ready to keep going. Go get that. Go get that promotion. Go get that money. And was offered an opportunity to uh, take a promotion. Move down to Charlotte. Felt like it was great. I've been trying to do this. Now I got this next promotion and go get more money, get to the big city. Felt like I was moving on up to the east side. Finally got my, y'all ain't working with me. And then at the same time, God calls me to pastor a church. Job was going to require me to work on Sundays, move away from where God had placed me. 
So now I'm faced with this decision because surely God wants me to take this promotion and this money. Of course he does. I've known pastors who started churches and the churches never moved beyond that initial start because their job required them to work some Sundays and they had to go get that money. And uh, they need, need a deacon in charge. And years later, they're still working hard. The ministry is not doing anything. It may not be like, feel like sin, but if it's going against God's will for your life, I'm coming for y'all today now. Then the very thing that God wants to bless you with can actually become an arbitrage around your neck, cause you to err from what God has called you to do. So yes, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, but we must not fall into the trap of its evil. And the key to overcoming this trap is to pursue godliness with contentment to get the gain that God has for you. My message titled today is committed to the blessings of God. Look at your neighbor and say, overcome the root of all evil. You're going to really be blessed. You must overcome the root of all evil. So let's talk about these three things. The blessings of contentment, the blessings of godliness, and the blessings of great gain. First thing we got to do, everybody say this with me, avoid the root of unhappiness. Our main pastor says, but godliness with contentment, contentment, contentment. The first key to being committed to the blessings of God is to avoid this trap called happiness, feeling unhappy. It's a root, actually, believe it or not, of evil. There are so many people in the world that are just unhappy. You're unhappy with your plight in life. You're unhappy with where you are in life. You're unhappy. You're unhappy with being single. I like being myself. I need a woman in my life. I need a man in my life. And you're unhappy. Meanwhile, sitting right next to you is a married person. Just so unhappy. This man is just driving me crazy. This woman is just nagging me. And if both of y'all knew, y'all could just swap. And still, both of y'all would be stock ninja. Unhappy. I'm happy being single. Unhappy being married. We're unhappy with our job. We're unhappy with our careers. Isn't it amazing that you will go to elementary school, go to high school, you got passion, you go to college, get your uh, uh, master's degree, and some of you want to be uh, this, a doctor, and so you go to even more education, you want to be a lawyer, you get all of this stuff, do all of this work, get to that job. Within one year, you can't stand. Can't stand these people. You just spent the first 22, 24 years of your life to get something, and in one year, you are unhappy. Get all that work to find you a mate. Mate, he's wore that little black dress. You know the one I'm talking about. Well, we're going to kill him tonight. Went to the club, had the legs showing. The head, hey, I'm going to kill him tonight. And you did all that work. I, I, I'm coming. I told y'all now, I'm going to preach the truth. You may not like the way I preach, but this is the way I preach. Did all this work. Finally got to that wedding day. Just all this. Boy, look at this. All the horses. Brr, angels hanging from the ceiling. Uh, music just playing. Horse and buggy out there. I literally married somebody that had a horse and buggy. I pulled up. I said, Lord, is that a horse and buggy sitting in my No, for real. Right there, sitting right there is a horse and buggy out there. I'm like, y'all joke is right. Her. One of the 
years later, be divorced? Because what I thought would make me happy is not making me happy, so now I gotta do something else to go get happy. The pursuit of happiness is a root of evil. It's not a biblical concept. You don't even find it in the Bible. The few times you see even the word alluding to it, it was man's pursuit of it, not God's. It's not a concept that God has in Scripture. I deserve to be happy. It's not a biblical concept. Yet we pursue it, the pursuit of happiness. And it's an error. Most of us make these decisions towards happiness. Boy, preach right there. And because it's an error, we end up, as the scripture saying, with pierced hearts. We err from the faith in God. We have broken hearts. Trying to get happy because the pursuit of happiness is the pursuit of something your flesh wants, which has nothing to do with what God wants for you. A lot of people just don't like this kind of preaching, but I'm staying right here. If I want to be happy, well, happiness comes from the root word hap, H-A-P, which is where we get the word happen, which means that it's a chance. Very rarely happens. All the stars got to line up in the moon. Everything got to be in place for you to be happy. How many of y'all graduated from high school or college. Raise your hand. Remember how happy that was? All about screaming at your name and you, that, that was your day and they had a party for you. Boy, you felt happy. Then you woke up the next day and realized, man, I got to work for the next 45 years. You got married just feeling good. It's about three years you wake up. You still here? You'd be hoping that you wake up and be some, a new man, a new woman. Boy, I preach right there. Because I ain't happy no more. Mm. So I'm trying to go back and get happy. I'm trying to go back and do this. Happiness is based upon you and your flesh. But God doesn't want you to pursue happiness. He speaks a lot about joy. It's not the same. Happiness is about you. Joy is about the Lord. It's based on him. So the answer to being content, the blessings of contentment, stop pursuing happiness and learn to be content. Let me say that again. Stop pursuing happiness and learn to be content. Why? Because I, can, I can't find the former in there, but I can find the latter. Paul said, not that I speak in respect of what? For I've learned, I've learned, I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. See, I'm only happy when my money is right. I'm only happy when my honey is right. I'm only happy when these things in my life, but those are seasons that change and shift and move and manipulate and shift on me. And so Paul says, it don't matter what season I'm in, I got to learn how to be content. Content in whatever season I'm in. Content means to be in a state of peace. See, the reason why you stressed out and anxious and filled with anxiety, which is you're going to be messed up because you ain't going to be happy a lot. But God says, hallelujah, be careful for now. Y'all stop stressing out and worrying. Look around. Look at all the bald head people. You're stressing out too much. Look at all the gray haired people. You're stressing out too much. Uh, okay, y'all ain't working with me. Either that or you're getting old. But, but some of y'all stress. You're having your eyes breaking out. You're jittery. Dog don't even want to be around you. Roo, roo, roo. Just walking out the house. When you come in the room, they leave. Because uh, 
you, 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 you're, you're not happy. You, you know, you're miserable all the time. Paul said, I've learned, I've learned, stop pursuing happiness and learn to be content in whatever state I am. He went on to say, see, it, it, content, like I said, it was a state of peace, a state of peace, uh, willing to accept things as they are. To be satisfied with one's personal circumstances. Uh, I didn't say you had to like it, but you can have peace about it. I didn't say, hallelujah, preach right here. I, I don't like being where I am, but I'm going to have peace about it. I'm not going to stress out about it. Paul said, I've learned uh, both how to be a base. That means at the bottom, you lost everything. Ain't nothing working out. Uh, and how to abound. Boy, you're cooking with grease. Only old folk know what I'm talking about when we talk about cooking with grease. That means, boy, it's just flowing. It's just working. Uh, hallelujah. Everything you touch. Uh, blessings and blessings and blessings. Uh, the favor of the Lord is upon me. Call said, I can be content in that state. Uh, everywhere and in all things I am instructed both uh, to be full. Uh, hallelujah. But also uh, preach right there, Pastor Will, uh, uh, to be hungry, content, even when I'm hungry, to both abound or to be in a state of need, to be in a state of need, to suffer need, he says, to be hungry, to have need, to be alone or to have all your friends and family. To feel belittled, humiliated. Am I talking to anybody? To feel degraded. Let me talk to somebody. You feel powerless to change your circumstances. Powerless to deal with what's going on. And yet, Paul said, I've learned how to be content. So I'm content when things are just just messing up and people are walking away and my heart is broken my marriage has failed my money ain't right my job is messed up all these people going here dancing about what god is doing for them god you ain't doing nothing for me so so paul said when i'm in that state I've learned how to be content. I learned to have peace about this thing. It's going to be what it's going to be. I may cannot change this thing, but I'll tell you what I can change. I can change my level of contentment and have peace. Somebody say peace. Uh -huh. And then you got to even learn how to be content when you are abound. Uh, see, when stuff is working, some of y'all get the big head now. Some of y'all think you all that in a bag of chips. Uh, when you get that promotion, you get that increase, you get that nice car, nice house. Uh, Everything is uh, uh, working for you. You're not content. You are beside yourself. When God says we are not to think more highly of ourselves, uh, you ain't the reason why all that's working out for you. You ain't the reason why you got that promotion, that job, that increase. You ain't the reason why you look that good. Boy, preach up in this place. Uh, you ain't the reason. Uh, uh, preach in here uh, that everything is flowing. Uh, everything is working out. Mm, preach. Uh, and so I got to learn how to be content. And keep myself at a, a, a even keel uh, even when it's working well for me. Uh, you're full. You have what you want. Your friends, your relationships are going well. And yet you got to learn uh, how not to think more highly but to be content. Uh, we must be content in either state. Uh, you must learn how, whether I'm at the bottom or at the top or somewhere in between, uh, it don't matter matter because God's on my side and I will learn how to be content. I'll learn how I'll preach right here to eat some pork and beans. I'll learn how to fry a bologna sandwich and put a little piece of cheese on it. I'll learn how, hallelujah, preach in this place, Pastor Will, how to take some a piece of bread and put some mayonnaise on it and, lay, and, and go out and be full. I'll learn how how uh, preach in this place to use a bus pass uh, have people picking me up uh, to get me to work and get me to church uh, I've learned how to be content uh, when it ain't working uh, when I'm hurt when I'm broken uh, but I'm gonna hold my head up because uh, I got peace uh, I got peace when you leave I got peace when my money leave I got peace uh, when my friends leave I got peace uh, when my job leaves I got peace uh, because baby you can take that stuff but you ain't gonna touch my peace. You can 
take my job, but you ain't going to touch my peace. You can take my honey, but I'm still going to have peace. Uh, preach right there. My marriage ain't working the way I thought, but I'm going to have peace. My money ain't right, but I'm going to have peace. You know why? Because if I'm content with God, even if everything walk out, guess what? If God ain't through with me yet, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Baby, you thought you was the one, the reason why I was doing well? Go ahead and walk away and find and watch me still do it because I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You thought when you took your money away that I was going to be broke? David said, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. If I have to step down, sell the car and get a hoopty, move in in one of y'all closets, I'm still going to be all right. Why? Because I can do all things. I've had great people walk out and leave me. And yet, yesterday I was hosting the national, international presiding bishop of the church of God in Christ with all that has happened to me. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if God called me to do it, it don't matter who walk away. It don't matter what walk away. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Get through people a high five and say, we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. No matter what state, we're going to get it done. No matter how broke, we're going to get it done. If I can't pay for it, somebody going to give it to me. If I can't afford it, somebody going to cut the price. Whatever it is, if I can't do it by myself, a stranger will show up and help me do it. But I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Look at your neighbor and say content, content, content. The blessings of contentment. Y'all unhappy. I don't walk in unhappiness. I walk in contentment. Y'all frustrated and messed up, aggravated, ready to cuss everybody out. Got a bitter heart. I could be bitter. I could be frustrated. I've been depressed. I've been sad. But I don't live in that place. I live in contentment. Which brings me to the blessings of godliness. But godliness with contentment. Godliness, everybody say, avoid the root of faithlessness. Avoiding faithlessness. In order to do that, you must be godly. We must be devoted to worship and praise and prayer and honoring God. See, there are many lessons that Jesus wanted his disciples to get when he walked with them for three, just three years. His ministry only lasted three years. His ministry only lasted three years. He shook up the world, but it only lasted for three years. Three years. And so he knew he had a short period of time to get this message across. And on, on many occasions, we see that he kept talking to them about their faith, about their faith, about their faith. Because, see, hallelujah, faithlessness is a root of evil. It's going to relate to your money in just a minute. And in Matthew 8 and 26, he said, why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds. In other words, some of us lose our faith when we get in danger. When things are closing in on you and you're afraid. He said here, why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? Matthew 6 and 30 says, wherefore if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is, which, which, 
today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he much more close you? Shall he not much more close ye? O oh, ye of little faith. Uh, this deals with the attack on our faith uh, when our resources run out, when you lose the job, when the money ain't right, uh, when the retirement disappears and some of us, uh, hallelujah, begin to lose our faith because, oh Lord, what are we going to do and this ain't working out uh, and you lose your faith. Uh, uh, preach, I'm coming for you in just a minute now. Uh, in Matthew 4 and 31, he says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him uh, and said to him, oh thou of little faith, why didst thou doubt the story of Peter when God said, come, uh, and he walked on water. Uh, why did he get out that boat and walk on water? Because he believed God. Uh, but when he saw the storms and the wind and the raging, uh, he realized, uh, uh, preach right here, uh, that he did didn't have enough faith in God. Uh, in other words, uh, he began to lose his faith because of the cares and the and, and the, the storms and the things of life. Uh, and so he believed, but he didn't trust. I preach right there. Uh, see, sometimes God will call you uh, and you will launch out there in the deep, uh, but then you realize you never learned how to swim. Boy, I'm going to preach up in this place. Uh, and you start getting afraid. What did I do this for? Uh, and God says, oh ye of little faith don't you know if I called you I got you don't you know if I called you I will make a way don't you know if I called you I don't care what happens what storms arise I am still God I am still God I ain't gonna call you call you and then let you die call you and let you fail you might fall but that don't mean you're a failure unless you decide not to get back up again and Jesus said oh ye of little faith and then in Matthew 17 and 19, the disciples came to him and said, Lord, why could we not cast out uh, this demon? Uh, and again, he said it was because of your unbelief. Uh, you see, uh, to understand the significance of this is to go back uh, and study when Jesus first sent them out. Uh, hallelujah, 72 by 2. Uh, and they came back with the report saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. We are out here killing it. Uh, the ministry is working. Uh, we're casting out demons. Uh, but all of a sudden they ran into a demon that wasn't impressed. Boy, preach right there. They ran into a demon that was stubborn and wouldn't come out. And they said, Lord, why couldn't we cast them out? And he said, because of your unbelief. Oh, preach right there. You need to understand that Oh, some of y'all can believe God for first grade, but you can't believe him for college. Preach right there. And you got to understand that the same God that got you through kindergarten, your ABCs and one through threes uh, can get you through calculus and algebra uh, and physics. Uh, that same God. Uh, and But you got to have faith. Uh, and this is where the love of money comes in. Uh, see, the love of money uh, will cause one to have faith uh, in what they have uh, rather than who they have. Y'all better write that down. Uh, the love of money uh, will cause you to have faith uh, in what you have uh, rather than who you have which is why Jesus said it will be hard for a rich man to make it to heaven why because every time he get in trouble he go to his money his money buys him out of jail his money buys him out of trouble his money buys his kids and when they get in trouble out of trouble his money is always his answer and so because his money is his answer he has faith in money which is why when certain people lose lose their money they lose themselves when they lose their money people have committed suicide because they lost all that they had and they said what's the use of living they've jumped off out of skyscrapers and jumped over bridges and killed themselves because they lost what they had faith in I need you to understand something there are things in this world that will present themselves to you and if you're not careful you have have faith in them and if they leave you you will lose yourself if they you lose if you don't put all your heart blood sweat and tears in that job and work 60 70 hours a week and them jokers lay you off some people have lost themselves when they got laid off boy preach right here people have lost their retirement
retirement money and everything that he depended on and they ended up losing themselves blowing their brains out because their faith was in what they have but baby what you have can disappear what you have can get lost I don't care how much you have I don't care how secure you think it is people had uh, retirement and Enron and different companies uh, hallelujah Anderson uh, I remember all them things uh, and them jokers went belly up uh, the night before you went to bed thinking you was taken care of uh, only to wake up and find out that you broke uh, and if your faith uh, is in what you have uh, you will lose your mind uh, preach in this place uh, and so God says for the love of money uh, is the root of all evil uh, uh, and people covet it after uh, and it causes them uh, to err uh, in their faith uh, because their faith uh, is founded on the wrong principles uh, on the wrong things uh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor uh, don't put your faith in your money uh, don't put your faith in your stuff because uh, that stuff will leave you uh, but only one thing that ever said uh, I will never uh, leave you uh, nor forsake you uh, on Christ uh, the solid rock I stand uh, but when I put my faith in you uh, baby you are swear up and down you ain't gonna leave me uh, I look up and you'll be gone uh, I put my faith in that job and I work hard uh, and they lay me off uh, preach uh, I put my faith in my bank account uh, and the bank account go on I put my faith in the government uh, and the government go crazy I put my faith in things uh, and they're gone they're gone they're gone but oh preach right here but the blessings of godliness come when I walk by faith and not by sight preach right here which is why Jesus said have faith in God he said you must have faith in God not faith in what you have but faith in who you have not faith in what you see but faith in who you believe in because if you have faith in God and God tells you to do something all you gonna do is speak to that thing and say in the name of Jesus I command this mountain to get on of my way and that mountain will be cast into the sea not because I'm all that in a bag of chips not because of the mountain but because of my God which is well able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask a man came to Jesus and said Jesus can you heal my daughter she's sick unto death I'm coming for three of y'all right now oh Lord he believed that God could heal his daughter but while he was waiting on God looked like Jesus got distracted a woman with an issue of blood showed up and took Jesus off his path Jesus took the time and said somebody that got faith has touched me and got my attention and he said who are you where you at and she trembling he said it was me Lord and at that very moment because she believed God she was healed but because of the distraction Jesus didn't get to the little girl and the people from his house said trouble not the master any longer cause your daughter is dead some of y'all are saying Lord if you would have came last year if you would have showed up last month if you wouldn't have let them lay me off my job if my husband would not have left me if my mama would not have died I would have been all right and Jesus looked at the man and he said fear not fear not only believe I know they told you that your dream is dead but fear not they told you that your daughter is dead but fear not only believe look at somebody and say neighbor oh neighbor 
grave. They told you it was dead. And say, neighbor, fear not. Only believe. Why did they think the girl was dead? Because they were looking with their eyes. They didn't see her breathing. They didn't see her walking. And sometimes your dream stops breathing. Your dream stops walking. Your dream is laying there prostrate. Ain't moving. It looks dead. Jesus said she ain't dead. But the people with eyes laughed at Jesus. Of course it's dead. I ain't gonna make it. I'm 50 years old. It's too late for me. I've been divorced. It's too late for me. I ain't got no money. It's too late for me. My dream is dead. Well, well, the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stop looking at your dream and look at your God. Stop looking at your stuff and look at your God. Stop looking at your bank account, at your friendship, at your marriage, and look at your God. I will look to the hills from which cometh my help, my help, my help. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stop looking and start listening. Stop looking and start listening. If you look, you'll see a dead girl. But if you listen, you'll hear Jesus saying, fear not, fear not, fear not, only believe. Somebody, anybody, give God praise for what you hear. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Somebody, start listening. Start listening. Start listening. Stand right there. That's God. Stand right there. That's what I want. Stand right there. That's what God has for me. I don't see that because that's behind me. What I see is what's in the world. That's right there. The Bible says that Satan took Jesus up and showed him all that he could have. Showed him the new house. Showed him the new woman. Showed him the new career. Showed him all the things that he wanted. And so he's looking. But all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. But I see it. I want that money. I want that honey. I want that career. And But I don't see the blessings of the Lord. Because they are behind me. Now the Bible says the blessings shall overtake you. Which means that they are where? I can't hear you. If the blessings are going to overtake you, they have to be behind you. And so you're looking what's in front of you when what God has for you is behind you. And so you're walking towards something that you want, but when what you need is actually behind you. But here's the problem. The blessings ain't chasing you. The blessings are going towards God. So as I'm walking, the blessings are walking with me. But when I turn
turn away from God. I go towards my stuff. The blessings start going towards God. And I miss God trying to get a house, trying to get a man. But if I change my mentality and keep walking, now guess what happens when I'm walking? But I start walking towards God. See, the blessings are trying to get to God because God said, I will reward them. And so all of a sudden, while I'm going to God, the blessings are coming up behind me and I will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming and going. Why? Because I'm chasing after God and the blessings are coming towards God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. But they that come after God shall believe him and be rewarded. Somebody scream, keep chasing after God. Keep chasing after God. Keep chasing after God. Don't chase stuff. Don't chase people. Don't chase things. Chase God. And the blessings of the Lord which maketh rich and addeth no sorrow because see I'm going to mess some of y'all up when you really get blessed by God it had nothing to do with you you was just standing between God and the blessings and they overtook you and you benefited from the fact that you had faith in God and them blessings that were going after God end up blessing you you're trying to figure why am I getting all this favor why am I getting all these opportunities why are doors open up for me because you are in the way of the blessings of the Lord which maketh rich and out of sorrow, no sorrow. Somebody give God praise. I dare three people to get on your feet and just praise God. Stop worrying about your money and just chase God with the praise. Chase God with the worship. Chase God with the word. Clap those hands. Oh, ye people. Get in the prayer line. Chase God every day with prayer. Chase God every day with your praise. Chase him, chase him, chase him. Here's what Paul said. Y'all fighting to get stuff, fighting to keep stuff, fighting to get things back, fighting to stop losing things. That ain't what we fight for. Paul said, fight the good fight. I can't hear y'all. I can't hear y'all. Of faith. You don't fight for stuff. You fight to hold on to your faith in God. See, it don't take much faith when it's working out. But baby, when you lose everything, you better fight for your faith. Don't you slay me, yet will I trust you. Lord, all the days of my appointed time, I'm going to fight. Fight with my praise. Fight with my prayer. Fight with my worship. Fight with my shout. Fight for your faith. Fight for your belief in God. Fight for it. Fight for it. Fight by studying his word.